Hey, welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined as always in studio by my good friends, my partners in radio, Barnabas Piper and Ronald J. Martin. Boys, we have uh, big changes coming up uh, to the program. Um, a lot of a lot of exciting business things on tap, Pipe, including a live show. Uh, but the one constant in our life is Dwell Bible. Um, Pipe, tell the listeners about Dwell, and then we'll tell them about the live show. Absolutely. <clears throat> listeners, Dwell has been, I think they're our, our longest time sp- uh, sponsor and partner, you know, over the life of our entire show. So seven, almost eight years now. Uh, and they've been with us for two or three of those years. It's an audio Bible app. If you go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant, you can see the discounts they have for our listeners as well as check them out. I think they also have a free kind of seven day trial if you just want to check it out. But it is a, I think it's probably the most full fledged audio Bible experience out there in terms of Bible versions, narrators, musical backgrounds, playlists, listening plans, kind of the full thing. So not just a straight read or a listen through the Bible. They do have a read-along option. So go check them out, dwellapp.io slash happy rant. They have a 30% discount off their lifetime subscription, a 10% discount off of their annual subscription. It's well worth the money. And if it's something that you know that somebody else might like, uh, it, you, can, you can buy it for somebody as a gift. So go check them out today. Pipe, that's fantastic. And uh, it's hard to believe, but it's almost live show time again. And there's something different about this year's live show um, in that it's marking the end of something, not our program, though. There, there's been some fear and trepidation as we've uh, tried to explain the last laugh to people, um, like it's going to be the end of, of the happy rant completely. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. But uh, what is it, Pipe, exactly? Yes, yeah, so it is It is the Happy Rant Live, The Last Laugh, which is because this is the final year of Together for the Gospel. So T4G, this long-standing reformed bastion of, of you know, khaki and navy and, and long sermons, <laughs> we've, we've done multiple live shows in conjunction with this, and this is the last one we will be able to do in conjunction with them, not the last one we will ever yeah. do. So we want to give them a proper send-off into, uh, you know, wh- wherever reform guys go to relax and retire, not the beach <laughs> to collect seashells. Uh, I'm the only one who's allowed to make that yeah. joke. So it will be April 18th. It's a Monday. It's a bit of an odd night, but it's the night before T4G starts. Mm-hmm. It will be at 7 p.m. at Sojourn, New Albany, Indiana. So that sounds like a very random location. It's actually about 10 minutes from downtown Louisville where T4G will take place. If you go to thehappyrant.com, our website, you'll see a big thing at the top that says the live show. Click on that. It's got all the details. It's where you can get your tickets. Tickets are $20, or we have a premium ticket option for $45 that will include a special limited edition Last Laugh t-shirt, as well as some other Happy Rant goodies. So you can go $20, you can go $45, get all that stuff thrown in. The premium tickets are only available until March 27th because we need to get the t-shirts ordered and everything. And tickets for the show will continue to be on sale all the way up till day of event. So again, April 18th, 7 p.m., right before T4G, we will do our normal thing of uh, recording a couple episodes and then doing a lot of Q&A and interaction with people who are in attendance. That's, I mean, I, I can't speak for you guys, but I think that's our favorite part, just the chance to field questions see what people bring that's funny and creative, have a great time interacting with folks. It should be a blast. Absolutely, Pipe. It will definitely be a blast. Can we talk about the scheduling of this thing for a minute, though? Because um, (laughs) just cards on the table, it is literally the worst night there is. Um, A Monday night, like right at the beginning (laughs) of a work week and right at the end of like Easter Sunday. So um, whatever you're doing for Easter, you're wrapping that up and then you're traveling the following Monday morning, missing whatever there is to miss about work that week. It's uh, an exceedingly stupid night. And yet, just in thinking about this, it makes me wonder, is this the ultimate cheap reformed guy move? Like maybe the Yum Center is literally the cheapest it will ever be. So apparently they're not doing it at the Yum Center this time. They're doing it at the Convention Center, which I I believe was has been has been totally renovated because it used to just be like a concrete Mm -hmm. prison. I mean, it was like going to a penitentiary when you would go to like the the big hall where the bookstore was yeah. and stuff there. 
So yeah, apparently it's all at the convention center and it's supposed to be a lot nicer. Oh man, that's uh, that's exciting. Dude, so... So here's here's the thinking yeah. on this. It, it probably is the ultimate cheap reform guy thing. It's also the schedule that works best for pastors oh, because sure. a lot of pastors take Mondays mm-hmm. off. Middle of the week is actually easier to get away than any mm-hmm. weekend because, you know, obviously church obligations. Yeah. So d- starting something on a Tuesday allows people to do church, have a day of travel, and then like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then get back in time to be prepared for the following Sunday. Yeah. So it's it's kind of the ideal pastor travel schedule. It sucks for people in any other industry and for the pastor's That's families. True. But, you know. But hey, this is... Pay no mind this to This is them. no, pay no mind to them. Absolutely not. This is all about pastors. So I wonder if pastors will be able to like go to T4G and go to the beach in the metaverse. Um, since your dad ruined beaches for these guys and T... No, he just ruined seashell collecting. Not yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, a very niche activity on the beach. Um So, Pipe, you sent along a fascinating thing, which is very funny to me, which is um, the fact that churches are starting, quote, metaverse campuses. Um, I want to get both of your takes on that, because you guys are are, uh, men of the cloth, and uh, this impacts your business directly. So, um, Ronald, you are are pastoral rest guy, you're small town pastor guy now. Um, but it looks like you're going to have to add metaverse pastor guy to your litany of, of achievements. What, what, how do you, how do you like approach this thing? I love how you said I'm a small town pastor guy now as if like my town just magically shrunk, created me, turned me into, actually, your town is actually a little too big for you to be small town pastor guy, like metaverse pastor guy, maybe a better move. Yeah, I know Um, the the small, the small town thing gets funny because again, you're, you're in a small town and then you get a guy that's like, no, my town's a small town. I only have four people in my town, you know, and you, it gets, dude, yeah. Human um, nature is amazing. Like, that's called that's time. called a house church, yeah, Bob. That's technically, not, it's not a small. You know, it's town. so weird. You guys bring this up because I was I was with a I was with a bunch of pastors a couple weeks ago, and um, one of them started like kind of like doomsdaying this whole thing with like metaverse mm-hmm. ministering, and I was like, right. and you know, I've heard people like talk about it a little bit, but he was so serious about it. He's like, dude, I'm serious. We got to be thinking about it. We got to be planning for it. This is like mm. the next wave that's going to threaten to like destroy <laughs> us and Sunday gatherings. And I'm sitting there like in a, in, literally in a group full of like, I don't know, 25 dudes and everybody's quiet. And I just, I looked around, I said, dude, I'm like, come on, you know, like, so it, it was like one of those things where like. I can't like I can't get all the way there, but I get that there are definitely dudes out there. And he was like bringing up some examples of people that are like already designing metaverse <laughs> services and like getting super serious about it because if they you know in like in classic big church church growth corporate church kind of like mm-hmm. kind of you know kind of world if they get ahead of this thing if they're the first yeah. ones out of the gate all of a sudden now man we can you know, we can metaverse our way into church gatherings and it's going to be sweet. And, you know, it doesn't mm. say anywhere in the Bible that we can't, you know what I mean? They start bringing up all the arguments and I, yeah. to me, it still sounds like a fairy tale. So like, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not something that like churches aren't going to do, but I feel like, I don't know, man, may, I'm so out of <laughs> touch with that whole Marvel DC world though. So like, I, uh-huh. I just kind of go, dude, is this a real well, thing? This is, yeah. This is, I mean, all I can think of when I hear about it, and again, I I don't want to downplay it in terms of like where technological development is going, because, you know, 15 years ago, where social media is now would have sounded alien, you know, just sort of the the, the perpetual shareability of everything Mm -hmm. and and so forth. So I'm like, yeah, there's going to be advances Um, or, you know, declines, depending on how you feel about them. But I just can't help but think, I'm like, this just sounds like Ready Player One. Yeah, 100%. You know, where it's like, you just, the, the world stinks, and so we lose ourselves in this in this fake world where we can where we can be super successful. Wait, the world stinks? Whatever. And, no, it totally yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, I'm, <laughs> goodness, I should move to Jackson if it doesn't stink there. That sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's, it is, it does, it's hard not to feel like it's a little bit dystopian fairy tale-ish where it's like oh there's people are going to live their lives in the metaverse Mm. i'm like "Mm." i think people will be addicted to it i think people will put far too much stock Mm. in it 
they will, they will, it'll be like the primary source of distraction. But I just don't see the world moving into the metaverse as like that's where life is now. I mean, yeah, yeah. And shoot, maybe I'll be maybe I'll be dead wrong, but that just seems well, like I an think, impossibility. I think like you could like I think you could make an I guess pipe like you could make an argument in the same way you just brought up the example of social media in that like if if this if this thing is if this thing becomes available and it becomes commonplace which it will more and more it is more and more you know day day by day mm -hmm. if it becomes commonplace to the point to where like you know in the same way that like dude you know i was sitting in an airport last week and you know i was just doing a little like observational commentary and i'm looking around and it used to be the cliche was like oh man all these young kids they can't get their eyes off their phones they don't even notice what's going on around them they don't engage mm -hmm. relationally with anybody and i looked around and i looked over at big m and i said what do you see and she looked around she said i see literally 20 couples over the age of 65 all like glued to their phones and so like yeah. it's like things progress in a way that they become commonplace so like, dude, I don't know if this, I don't know if this thing turns into something where, like, we're 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 kind of we're kind of slagging it off right now, but like, it becomes so readily available that we are able to incorporate it in our daily lives in ways that we just haven't envisioned now. Because, like, right now, it's only the geeks are able to like kind of put that into practice. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, you know, the fact that for the last 20 years, everybody's been buried in their phone. Like everybody sucks and is boring now. It's not just young people. Um, but that's the, that's definitely the, the easy answer to have. So who's going to be the first, we don't have to go names. We can go types. The first type of like ministry slime ball to leverage this into a book deal, like ministry in the metaverse by fill in the blank. Like, what type of person is going to do this? Can I point out some irony in that question? Yeah. The irony is that, well, A, I, I could give names. Sure. I'm pretty sure I know who it's going to be. Um, <laughs> we could do that. And I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> they, they they are already a church that exists primarily Well, I mean, the online. fact that you said slime but, ball, uh, T, is like, now I'm afraid. Now I feel like I'm going to have, I have names. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to say the name Andy Stanley, but like, I don't want to use mm. the word slime ball, but I feel like oh, no, it, it's, it's, it's like we're talking about, we're, you know, we're like in that realm. It's, it's Craig yeah. Rochelle and it's Craig Rochelle and Bobby Grunewald and, and Life Church <laughs> yeah. that they, they have, they have like a hundred and some campuses across the country. They already do like a digital lobby at their church, et cetera. Like they, they have more user data because they do, they, they built the U version app. There's, it's, it's a whole world. But what's ironical about what you just mm -hmm. said is that they're going to get a book deal yeah. where books will be printed on paper yeah. and people will have to unplug from the metaverse to read this book about how to do or church. Or can they the just metaverse. read the book? I, it, does, is it, does it become released in the metaverse? I think that's the question. Here's literally the only reason. How do you get royalties for books released in the I mean, we don't get that much royalties right. anyway, but how does one hypothetically get royalties for books well, released in the metaverse? Well, because you have to get I'm it intrigued. into the meta. It's like, how do you get royalties from Kindle? You got to get it into a device. You know I mean? It's digital transfer. Yeah. I think you can do it. Pipe, you can do it. <laughs> Pipe, don't I worry, think, you can do it. I'm so excited about this possibility. The only reason that books really exist anymore for ministry guys is so that you can photograph them when you first get them from the publisher. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like the only purpose they serve. Um, guys, do you think that there's a possibility to get our book into the metaverse? Can we Can we be like the, the entrepreneurs with that? How, can we? I would be fine with it. Kyle, if you're listening, <laughs> Kyle, this is our big marketing. This is our big Shut marketing. Up, Kyle. I mean, we're talking um, about we're talking about everybody else. Why don't we talk about us for a minute, boys? How about us? I, hey, you know, how about yeah. we? How about we jump on that on that multiverse bandwagon for a minute? So this kind of speaks to something though that's a little bit serious, and maybe this is just like middle age cynicism run wild here. But I've started to have that could be the subtitle for this middle podcast. age cynicism run wild. I've started to have such a low view of the publishing industry that I'm like, sure, whatever. Like, put our book in the megaverse, put our book in, you know, on a rack at Michael's next to Tim Tebow's. It doesn't matter, you know? I mean, whatever. But I don't want to have that view of church. Like, aspirationally, I still have a really high view of church, and I have a very high view of my own church. Um, you know, the publishing industry, pff, who cares? Um but something that's actually important, that's actually 
written about a whole bunch in the Bible. You know, I think the the calculus is different for it. And I don't want to just like shrug my, my shoulders and go whatever with it. Um, I don't know. I, I think I would probably be more like the guy in Ron's meeting in gloom and doom it and want to like jerk my car off a bridge before, <laughs> you know, all of this comes true in the metaverse. How <laughs> oh, is that? All? Yeah. But um, I don't know. I just, so here's the thing. I, the, the gloom and doom <clears throat> thing I feel like is way too yeah. far. I think it's I think it's one thing to be sort of a a forecaster, a predictor that says this will change dynamics within churches. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty neutral statement. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time. You know, if if America's political situation changes in the next 50 years and Christianity becomes kind of on the legal fringes, Mm -hmm. well, that's going to change dynamics. You know, we we, there there, there have been so many changes in the last, you know, 100 years. So to say that's pretty neutral, but to say like a doom and gloom, this is going to ruin everything, kind of, like, no, it's not. It, no, nothing is going to ruin the church. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel like anybody anybody who is a committed Christian should be able to kind of plant their flag on that yeah. statement. Yeah, for sure. B- because God said yeah. so. And so I'm just not that worried about the metaverse ruining church. Mm-hmm. Yes, we'll need to be aware. Yes, we'll need to be, you know, try to, I don't think we need to be on the front end of it, but at least up to date yeah. on it. Particularly if like, it's going to be different in Nashville than it is in Ashland or Jackson sure. because different cities advance into technology faster. Yeah. And okay. But the fact is that like, the church, the church is built around people gathering for corporate worship and community and the shared life of, you know, the body. And that might be diminished, mm-hmm. but then there's going to be a rebound where people are like, Oh, doing this all in this fake world sucks, and I'm lonely and I'm depressed. Yeah, for sure. And then they like we've seen it with social media. Yeah. People, people are, I think, learning that social media is not a place to go for everything, mm-hmm. and they're they're figuring out how to, you know, reengage with humans. Yes. Yeah. No, that's good, man. To some degree, and so like, it's yeah. There will be a there will be a downswing, and then there will be a rebound and a learning yeah. curve. I, I'm just I'm just not that worried about. No, it. that's a, that's a good word I think, and um, yeah, I mean the types of people who are going to try and ruin church have been trying to do that for decades already. So you know there there won't necessarily be exponentially more of that. So speaking of knowing what's best for everybody, um, this is hilarious. Piper, you sent along a tweet, and it's one of these lists of things to do. Um, so from time to time, someone will, will like list out 10 things like advice for young people. And then you get a list of 10 things. And then this person just gets eviscerated for it. And everybody tries to out clever each other, sort of responding to the list of 10. Um, and you'll, you'll have to fill me in on what that looked like. But, but this is a, this is a list from a guy named Dale Partridge, which is a cool name. Does anybody... Do you guys know Dale Partridge? Is he like famous or no. yeah, pipe? He's uh, he's kind of a leadershipy entrepreneur guy who has gone through several iterations, and he's kind of in a like he's kind of moved into the like live in a remote place and and raise your your family in isolation, homeschool type of community thing. I mean, for that matter, but, I don't even know a guy named Dale. Can we talk about that for about 30 seconds? <laughs> dude, you don't know any Dales. Oh, dude, I don't even know what era. I mean, is that what era is the is the name Dale from? Can you even imagine like two parents under 25, like birthing a child and saying he is beautiful. Let's name him Dale. I mean, like <laughs> when, when is the last time somebody named their kid Dale? Dude, I know one Dale in real life, and you he's do. awesome. Yeah, how, how yeah, old is but he's how old is he? He's an older gentleman. There we go. I want to say he's probably in his seventies. There we go. Um, now we're yeah, um, and I know Dale Dale Doback from the movie Step Brothers. Um, Dude, who's Dale real, is a but. rare. It's really it's like a common but rare name. It's like a name yeah. that like you you look at it and you don't go, oh, "That's weird." His name's Dale, <laughs> but you go, "Honestly, I've never. I don't know a Dale." I think a guy named Dale. He's going to be the kind of guy that puts a list together like this. Uh, a guy named Dale is going to be a certain guy. You know, he's got some things figured out. Um, like a guy named Dale is not going to be the like 
you know, wafy hipster going kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of in and in and in and in. Like he's not going to be qualifying everything. Uh, let know? me just, hey, I'm going to put something on the table right now, boys. I yeah. will not write the next Happy Rant book with you unless it is called A Guy Named Tail. I would write that. <laughs> yeah. That, what if it was a novel? <laughs> just a series, like a, like a story. I mean, about I, whatever it is, uh, man, I, yeah. the next book needs to be titled <laughs> A Guy Named Dale. What if it was a, a graphic novel with this guy as the main character? <laughs> I, think I feel like it could it could just be sort of like generational snapshots. Because yeah. a guy named Dale is I mean, there's a, it's a real like you there was a certain year at which this name just ceased to exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It it had a quick and window. So there's, it had a short run. Yeah. I mean, I think it had yeah, I mean it but but like so this this Dale is in his forties. Oh. So he's on the way younger. Yeah, he's the young, he's a younger Dale. He's the youngest Dale. Yeah, and I America. can't wait to do the follow-ups, like a guy named Brian. And, you know, like, Dude, like yeah. A, a guy named Kenny. You know? So Brian guy named is Bryce. Brian is like 45 to 50 years old. Yeah. He grew up in the 70s, 80s, and yeah, 90s. Yeah, all my friends were named Brian or Kenny. Oh, mine too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I was just thinking about this yesterday because I was, I was uh, working uh, on a project for church with a guy named Brian, whose wife's name is Jessica. Yep. And, and I was thinking about it as I was driving home. So Brian, we've been in the same small group for a long time. We're really good friends. Brian is just shy of 45. Yep. And, uh, and I was like, Brian and Jessica yeah, that's is it. like, that is a time stamped name. Is. Yep. You, you know, exactly like the, the 10 year period, <laughs> dude, wouldn't when this couple, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be about. amazing? Like for you guys, if you were, um, like in your churches, like dedicating a baby, and it was called Brian. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you call this couple up to the front. It would be amazing. Like, what if it was like Brian Dale? We, yeah, like, it, his mind's blown. Dude, you, you call this couple up to the front, and they're your classic like hipster church couple. You know, they're fashionably dressed, whatever Nashville people, and they're like, and their their sweet son Brian, <laughs> you know, was was born on Saturday. He's well, and Dale is pounds, just such 13, a little you know. sweetheart, guys. Yeah, oh, little Dale, you know. Um, they they get the hipster photos taken at Dale and uh, oh it, my god, it's a crack up when you meet like younger people <laughs> with names that that like they should have been born sixty years ago. Like we have, mm -hmm. like my my worship pastor and his wife are named and wait for it, boys, Scott mm -hmm. and Kathy, and they're wait for it <laughs> thirty years old. Dude, they, yeah, that's incredible. So there was a that's that's thirty years that's off. That's thirty yeah. years off, a hundred percent. There was a little resurgence like twenty years ago. In classic names, so like we we've got dozens of of guys running around my campus called Jack, right? Oh yeah, so yeah, there, that, well that was there classic. was a little that's class, yeah, a little pivot back into like mid century. Names. Yeah, that was getting all that's like vintage names coming back, like hey Henry well, and Jack, and you know all that. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, Henry William, yeah, Jack. all the classics. Those, dude, but and those yeah, those ones those ones can be. What, I find it ironic that Jack, because Jack used to just be a nickname for John. Yeah, it is. And the yeah. name John has not come. Yeah, back. my John dad's name was back. John, and people, some people called him Jack, like in yeah. his life. Yeah, for sure. That's a total. But like, like long classic names have come back, but like the kids aren't like they aren't shortening them anymore. Like if you get a kid, like if I get a class roster at the beginning of the semester, and there's a a kid on it called William. Um, he does not want to be called Will. That's off the table. <laughs> does not want to be called Bill. Well, Bill is it's, ironic. That would be ironic. Yeah, pr uh, uh, Professor, <laughs> it's William. Dude, you yeah. know what's so funny about yeah. that, T? It's like, it, yeah. it's so true. Because uh -huh. like what I find now is like people's names are the only thing they have control over. So I almost so feel true. like yeah. I almost feel like it's a way that they're telling you what you can't do, even though you can do everything else in their life. So it cracks me up when like <laughs> I meet the guy named William, and I shorten everybody's name. You boys know that. I do too. So I'll be yeah. sitting down to coffee with some I don't know some dude in the church. His name's William. We're sitting down, and I just start saying Will, and then I'll pause because I just realize I do it without thinking, mm. right? And then, yeah. uh, dude, I'm not kidding. If if he's under 35, nine times out of ten, I'll be like, Hey, I go. It's cool yeah. that I call you Will, right? And he'll be like. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's yeah. not. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. and it's like, oh, okay, William. And now I feel like I just lost an hour out of my life because I got to pronounce your full name. You know, totally. Well, and in the '90s, I feel like you would have. I don't no, know. It's Maybe this not. Is just a... It's not Theodore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the '90s, you would have had a conscience about like, and maybe this is just a Midwest thing, but you you would have kind of 
inside gone, eh, you can call me whatever you want. You know, I'm not, I'm not dying on this. Hill. Yes. Oh, you absolutely. Um, I, I still cringe to this. So, I mean, obviously my name kind of falls out of bounds on this because there's not a standard shortening of Barnabas, right. but it's pretty common for me to get the, hey, do you have a nickname? Like Barnabas is kind of a mouthful, <laughs> yeah. which is A, a weird thing to say about somebody's it's super name. Weird, Piper. Like, hey, your name is inconveniently long for me to pronounce. Right. Uh, short well, Piper, it was so inconvenient for us, I just started calling you Pipe. <laughs> you know right, but Elegant that's the sport. thing is like, I, I, my standard response is basically like, whatever you want. Yeah. And then they say, well, what about Barney? Because they think they're the first person to come up with this, despite the fact that that has been a joke since I was eight years old. Uh, and I'm like, you know, I'd prefer not. I might not respond to you if you call me that, but sure, go we run with yeah. it. I just don't tell people what to call me. So it's very odd to me. And people are like, no, this is my preferred. Yeah. This is, I, I'm going to. Dude, it's the one thing they, it's, you know, it's the one thing Dale has control over. I think that's absolutely right, for sure. Dude, can we do 30 seconds on the name Barney? Um, Yeah, because I feel like, I don't know what, Big T, why do we never go Barney with Pipe? I mean, I honestly am, I feel stunned right now about that. There was a guy in my, because you're nice. Dude, Barney's awesome, awesome, man. Because he's our friend. And we Barney's like so not cool, it's cool, Pipe. Well, okay, so I, that's, that's the energy I want to I go to. So in the mid-90s at my college, there was a guy named Barney. And Barney was, like, if you dropped him into 2022 in Nashville, he would be just a certain kind of standard obnoxious hipster, right? But for the 90s, he was like way on the leading edge of that, right? Like he had the ironic name, he had the ironic look, his shtick kind of really played in a certain crowd, but not every crowd. And I would say not even close to every crowd. Oh, you're describing like, he just was, he was like the college version of like Ben Folds. Yes, something. but like not quite that cool, like funny Ben Folds, okay. you know? So like being funny was part and parcel with kind of having a funny name, but yeah. you know he was he was just, he was that guy. But it worked for him. But I I would like to, I mean not enough to actually track this person down and care. But like I would like to know, I, I'd like an update twenty five years later on how Barney is playing in twenty twenty two. You know what I mean? Is the shtick still working? Is the name still working? Um, I'd be fascinated to know. Was you he know like what I mean? a funny guy? T was he? What, is that? How- <sighs> he wasn't funny to me. He was like kind of super arty theater guy funny, which college me didn't so, like. This so person. not funny. Yeah. Not funny in the slightest. No. Not funny in the slightest. But like I think me now might like him. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Me now might like him. Me circa nineteen ninety five was like whatever about this guy. And that's just you know, he that's a yeah. fascinating and I know we're I know we're going crazy right now, but like that's a okay. fascinating uh rabbit right there. Is like have you yeah. ever met like, have you ever met, like, there was maybe a guy from your past, and he was literally the most crack-up dude. Like, literally, all you did when you were around him was just crack up. <laughs> and then somehow, like, time passes, and it can be 5, 10, 15 years, yes. and you meet him, and you go, and, like, all the funny has been drained from him, and you're like, dude, I don't even, like, I don't know you yes. anymore. This and is it, a real thing. Yeah, and I don't know, like, not necessarily had a bunch of tragic things happen to him, because obviously that no. is a real thing. That can happen. It's, like, a lot of sobriety. Um, had yeah. some events unfold, but I'm talking like oh, yeah. almost to the point where you're like, dude, seriously, <laughs> seriously, what happened? Because <laughs> you're like a different yeah. person. It's a cliche, but like, I think people hit middle age and they just get really boring and whatever it was that made them funny in college isn't really like they're, it's almost like, and I, I think this is worse in the church, actually. I think they realize they have to become a certain kind of serious guy. Mm. And for some of them, it happens in like their late twenties or whenever they have their first kid. Right. Like, so the fun, love and party guy, the kind of ha ha guy, all of a sudden becomes like, I'm a really serious man, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm no longer laughing at anything. I'm no longer any fun to hang out with. Why does this happen? Pipe? I, I don't know because I feel like I've worked really hard to avoid that, which probably means I'm just a grown up child. Yeah. I I still can't sit through a meeting without making two or three jokes yeah. to the people around me because I just I can't abide boredom. Right. And yeah, so I but it's absolutely true. Like 
there's, I mean, I could picture particular particular people from you know my own college experience or whatever. The have have you guys seen School of oh, Rock, yeah. the mm-hmm. Jack Black movie? His roommate yeah. in that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I forget his name. His name's like Leonard or something yeah. like that. And uh, <clears throat> you know, he's the guy who's like, I'm not that guy anymore. And you know, when yes. he used to be, you know, yes. kind of a, a a punk rock or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like that's that's everybody at between the ages of you know it, well basically after the birth after the birth of their first child so it might be might be 28 might be 35 whatever but like you just sort of hit that point and you're like I'm not that guy anymore I no longer have any fun <laughs> my sense of humor has been has been shelved and completely forgotten about right and I don't yeah it's weird it's it med, imagine church if like 45 year old guys still had a sense of oh, humor oh man it'd be incredible I, I... What a great place to hang yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, it feels kind of tragic. Christian men who like to yeah, laugh. Yeah, it feels a, a bit tragic to me, but maybe there's just something about, like, adult life that kind of, um, yeah. y- y- you know, it kind of cuts out the sense of humor for a lot of people. Yeah, I think and to your real. point, Big well, R, I'm, yeah, you're you're not, yeah, we're not talking, like, real tragedy here, but it just seems like a thing that kind of happens across the board, which is unfortunate. I find that... I find that people who have been through tragedy are better at laughing. They might be. Like, yeah. Whether it's whether it's like they went through a significant whether it was a loss or, you know, drug rehab mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. where like their life was they they have a better understanding of the place of humor yeah. than the like I'm just a responsible adult middle class boring yuppie. Yeah. Like that that's the person who I'm like I don't even know how to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the, the I think some of it is because, and maybe this is sort of a Christian work ethic thing, mm-hmm. it, it feels particularly pronounced in the church yeah. world, is that like we have equated maturity with seriousness, mm-hmm. and I don't think they have anything in common with one another, except that maturity is knowing when to be serious and when to make jokes. Yeah, like, and we just abandoned the jokes part Like 15 of it. years ago, I used to talk about this dynamic in church wherein if you were a certain kind of boring, quiet guy... They were for sure making you an elder, like whether you were qualified in any other way or not. <laughs> like if you were just like the most boring, quiet guy, you were getting you were getting like fast track to becoming an elder. <laughs> but maybe that's part of it. Um, Which, yeah, it, it's absolutely true. Because, yeah, there's 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 like the old phrase, you know, and I think it's drawn from Proverbs. But like, what is it? Oh, be silent and you know, people wonder if you're a fool or open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah. And basically saying, if you're quiet, people will think more highly of you than you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> I don't necessarily and I, think it, quiet and boring go together, though. Like, I know quiet dudes who are a good hang, but yeah, like, boring sure. is 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 its own thing entirely. And um, it seems like... Yeah, so yeah, I don't mean to say, yeah. like, introverts are boring, because I, some of the funniest people I know, it's 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 about a matter of, like, they say very little, and then they say one thing, and it's, you know, it's the perfectly... Yeah, con- boring yeah. Boring is as boring um, does, you know what I mean? It's right, more of a it's right. more of a practice <laughs> than it is something that's intrinsic, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you can, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can... Have you ever met a guy that like is like T? Have you ever met a guy that initially is a little on the quiet side and you're like, man, I don't I don't know how to figure this guy out. And literally yeah. all it took was for you to like talk to him for like 30 minutes and get to know him a little bit. And you're like, funniest yeah. guy I've ever met in my life. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. Those those guys often end up being the best guys. Mm-hmm. You know, they're uh they end up being a lot of fun. But it seems like guys our age either go like if they're talkative, they end up being like super chatty like entrepreneurial guys which is super boring like um and pipe you know these guys from being in nashville where they're nashville's <laughs> oh, filthy I'm just with picturing that patagonia vests oh everywhere. my gosh yes and those guys are so boring but they can go they can go 20 minutes on themselves at a at the drop of a hat you know like it's, you just it's, described it's, i think 96 percent of everybody i know <laughs> No, it's true though. Like it, it seems like that's the only way they feel like they can be an energetic middle aged. But guy. have you heard about NFTs, guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. So like, I think there's a real market opportunity here for actual interesting guys. Um, so if they're if they're out there, we would we would love to hear from them. We we would love to have them in the audience in. Uh, in April for our, I would our love if I'm gonna th- if you're gonna throw it out like that, Big T. You know, here's yeah. what I would love. I would love to challenge and to welcome and to invite anybody named Dale to the last laugh. How about this? 
like we have a we have a special, and I don't know how we work this out with uh, with our ticketing agency, but like if if your act if your name is Dale and it's verifiable, you can come to the show for free. <laughs> um, and I would love to give a free T shirt to the youngest Dale in the room. And mm. oh well, the easiest way to work it out is just buy your ticket, and we will see that it is properly refunded or credited you back to you. You know, because it's hard on the front end, but we will take care of you yeah. for sure. If your name is Dale, we're gonna we're gonna absolutely take care of you, and uh, it's gonna be a, a night to remember. So now I, I gotta hop off the show, but it sounds like prom. I'm gonna be honest, a, <laughs> a night, night to, to remember. remember. It's like the absolutely a dream come corsages, through. you know, the whole thing. It's gonna yeah. be incredible. But ill-fitting tuxedos everywhere. How young? I want to set an over/under on like youngest Dale. So let's just set it at forty-five. Do you think we'll see a Dale younger than forty-five? Mm. Yes. Man. Interesting. I don't. Quiet. I don't. I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't believe so I, either. I Ronald. think. I think we will see one because. <clears throat> I, as we've thought about, you know, as, as as we've talked about it, and we were talking about this Dale who sent the the how to be like me tweet. Um, <laughs> he's he's on the young end because he's probably mid forties, yeah. but there are somebody is named after their That's grandfather. True. Some like some twenty seven year old you know computer programmer is named Dale, mm. and his grandfather was Dale. It's and and that that's you know. That's pretty center cut for our audience. Yeah. So yeah. I, I could see I could see the I could see the millennial Dale showing so par- up. There he's he's a unicorn, but he's, he's a there. unicorn and if and if he's gonna be anywhere, he's gonna be well, uh at our venue that night. I hope so the Pipe's Gali taking the under yeah. Pipe's taking the under on Dale. Ron and I are taking the over. We'll have to see what happens. But boys, we have uh we have done what we always do on this program. Um, which is wandering to and fro through through a couple of topics and really not even getting to the second one. But um doing 20 minutes on the name Dale, which apparently we all needed, you know, who knew we needed, we needed a little Dale. We needed so a guy named Dale just today. I haven't thought about Barney from college in like 25 years. That was good for me. Um, so we've, we've done some good work here this morning, boys. And until next time. The happy rant is brought to you by resonate recordings. If you go to resonaterecordings.com, you can see the full range of services they offer. So if you're considering starting a podcast, they are the ones we recommend going with. Again, go to resonaterecordings.com to see their prices, to connect with them and ask any questions, and to see what they can do to help you launch, edit, master, and improve your podcast. Again, go to resonaterecordings.com to see what they can do to help you launch and improve your podcast.